ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode. And today we are talking about Q2 market update. You may see some new branding on our page over the coming weeks as we move to our new home, Realtors Inc., but rest assured, we'll be making the same great content. Okay, enough about us and now all about you. There's no easy way to put this right now, but the market is crazier this year than it was last year. Today, we are going to be covering a lot of things going on in the market now, from growth estimates to energy costs, inflation, home prices, interest rates, supply. Oh, and how could I forget? We also have to cover the rates that the Fed is increasing and hint they're not mortgage rates. Along with that, we'll be taking a look at the five key indicators in Westchester County, including new listings, pending sales, median sales price, homes available for sale, and days on market. This video is gonna be a little bit longer than usual, and that's because of all the moving parts in the market right now. Now, let's go. So growth estimates are expected by most major players to increase for 2022. Now, as we can see here, Zillow is leading the charge with 16.4% and Realtor.com is trailing all the way at the bottom at 2.9%. I can already guarantee that over time, these numbers are going to be adjusted and some of the higher numbers I do think are gonna to start to come down. Now, when it comes to energy prices, electricity alone is up 17 to 28% in our area. And gas right now is around 435 on average in New York. So if energy costs are higher, that will certainly raise the price of everyday goods. For anyone saying that this isn't going to affect the market, I dare say it's impossible that this will not. If your dollar cannot go as far as it did before, then you're going to need more of them. Unfortunately, we're not the government and we cannot just print our own money. And on top of that, Wages aren't increasing at the pace of everything else. So eventually, if this continues at this pace, yes, we will see home prices fall. I'm not saying they're going to crash, but they will definitely fall. Moving on to the good old feds. So the Fed is raising rates, but what rates exactly? Long story short, the feds are increasing the federal funds interest rates. This is a tool that allows them to control U.S. monetary policy. In 2008, the Fed lowered this to 0% to stimulate the economy. In the 1980s, it was around 20% to help reduce double-digit inflation. The percentage represents how much a bank needs for their total capital in reserves. The higher the percentage is, the more money they're going to need in reserves. This is 100% a deliberate attempt to manage the supply of money that's currently flowing throughout the American economy. As we know, there was a ton of money printed in the last two years, and a lot of that now needs to go away again, apparently, because the bank needs more in capital now than it did last year and needs to generate more income even faster, which in turn leads to higher rates on all aspects of financing. This is not just real estate. This is auto loans. And I guarantee you, if you look at your variable rate interest for your credit cards, that has also gone up. Now, the flip side to this is a lot of people are arguing that inflation is being caused by supply issues, labor issues, and an escalating war, not to mention the lockdowns that happen in so many different parts of the world. However, no matter what, the banks are not going to pick up the tab, which means you will be seeing the higher rates. Luckily, though, a lot of that is already priced into the markets as of the making of this video. However, if the Fed goes through with six more increases to the federal fund rate, you can 100% expect even higher mortgage interest rates. If you currently are pre-approved and you haven't spoken with your lender in the last 30 to 60 days about what your rate is, I would 100% do that right away before you even start looking again. Right now, we're sitting at an average of around 4.59%. I don't bring up these items to scare you. I bring up these items so you can help draw your own speculation about where the market is headed. But they'll also help you determine if it's a good time for you right now to buy or if it's also a good time to sell. Remember, if the cost of everything is going up. This could in turn lead to home prices having to come down. Now, again, I'm not saying it's going to crash. I don't even think we're going to see prices come down in the near future. What might happen is we might have less offers on homes. And because we have less offers on homes, this means that you might not have to waive appraisals and inspections and go 100 grand over asking just to get the house. So it might become a little bit easier to get the house in the next few months. And sellers, like I said, if you want top dollar, if you want the best terms, if you want your cake and you want to eat it, 
then right now is the time to make a move on this. And now onto the local market and what it's up to. Kicking us off first for today is median sales price. Now we can see here, we're not really changing too much. We were at 720 in January, February we're at 717, nowhere near the height of August, which was 887. So that's a good sign. So we're not seeing prices escalating. Next up, we have new listings. Let's see how many new listings are coming to the market. Excellent. This is great news from December 231, 475 in January, 558 in February. So we're starting to see an increase in listings, which is great going into the spring and summer markets. Next up, we have homes available for sale. Now this is saying at the end of the month, what's available and left for sale. Now this is actually a pretty good sign as well here. So 760 homes in December, 821 January, 833 in February. So as long as this kind of stays here and then slowly starts increasing, that'll be great news for buyers, not so great news for sellers. Next up, we have pending sales. As imagined, pending sales are up along with new listings. As we're getting more inventory, buyers are purchasing them. Now remember, the market is delayed by 30, 60, sometimes 90 days. So we're not going to see the effects of this market right now until another 30, 60 days from now. Next up, days on market. Now days on market has been slowly going up from June of 2021, 35 in November, and now we're back at 35 again in February. To me, the delays and things of that nature that we were facing a year ago are not as present as they were. I don't think we have, you know, lockdowns and we don't have shutdowns. We don't really have a reason for information to be backed up. It could be just attorneys, agents, inspectors, and everybody taking forever. I don't think that's the case. Number two could be sellers really stretching what they think a buyer is willing to pay for their home and it sits a little bit, they reduce the price and then it sells. So those two could be huge factors to this because we're still seeing the inventory move. Now let's take a look at month supply. So this is saying if we get no more new listings, how long will it take for New York to run out of homes, Westchester County that is? This is low, 1.3, 1.4, 1.4. So if we get no new listings in Westchester County, it'll take 1.4 months to sell it all. So if you're thinking about waiting, even if we do get more listings, think about how many other people are also waiting for the more listings. So this is not a great number to be a buyer. This is a fantastic number to be a seller. This is actually a very unhealthy market to only have 1.4 months of inventory left. Now there is one last number I do wanna look at. This is percentage of list price. And basically what this is saying is what percentage of the list price did the home sell? So if it's over 100%, it's showing you that this home sold for over its list price. We really haven't gone above asking for that many months. It started in May of 2021, and then by November, we were back at normal again, actually October. Now, the way I would look at this number is, hey, the greater majority of homes are getting at least the asking price. So what else can you do if you're not gonna go above the asking price to kind of sweeten your offer? It could be waive your appraisal, it could be waive your inspection and only have it for knowledge purposes. There's a bunch of different things you can do, but this is what's telling me. It's telling me, hey, at least get your offering price to the list price. So if you're a buyer or if you're a seller, what exactly should you be doing right now? Well, really just sit down, strategize, think about exactly what it is that you want, exactly how it is you're gonna make that happen and go from there. If all these price increases around you are getting you a little scared and you don't think you want to purchase right now, hey, that's okay, then wait. If you want to take advantage of the still very low interest rates and get into something before they go even higher, hey, it's a great time to do that. It's a great time to sell because you could still get such great stipulations, especially when you price it correctly. So still overall, very healthy market. We don't see any major shifts happening, but again, there are a lot of variables going on right now. And should things progress the way they are, things might get a little bit worse before they get better. However, if you are a buyer or you are a seller, it's still a great market out there. Homes are still selling. There's still buyers that want them. Rates overall are still really low. So really the best advice I can give you right now is kind of just monitor your personal financial situation, see how much extra money you're going to be spending every month now that basically everything has gone up from groceries to gas to electric to any type of bill you have has probably gone up. 
So take a look at all that stuff and see, does it make sense to make a move right now? If you're a seller, hey, great time to sell. You're still getting the best of the best because as you saw, there's only about, let's call it two months of inventory left. At the making of this video, it is the end of March. So in a couple of weeks from now, we're gonna have some more data, more numbers. We'll have all of March's numbers released and kind of see if the rate hikes that have happened in the last three or four weeks have really had an impact on the market short term, or if it's kind of something that still really hasn't taken its toll yet. So check back with us in a couple of weeks and let's see what the market's doing. As always, if you have any questions that we can help answering, you can always click the Cali link down below. It'll get you a free 30 minute call with myself or a member of the team. And as usual, before you go, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button, ding the bell, and I will see you here next time. I'm your host, Jimmy O'Donnell, and this was the Q1 going into Q2 market update.